Okay, so this week, um, what I'm going to do, sorry, this week on Wax Carving Wednesday, um, I had an idea for a gallery exhibit that I'm going to work on. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to, so as you, sorry, as some of you may know, I am known for my cuttle bone casting. So this is cuttle bone casting where I carve in reverse into a cuttlefish bone and that's what gives me this wood grain texture. Um, so it's a very unique texture given to cuttle bone. I am pretty, I, I, I know quite a bit about cuttle bone and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reproduce this texture in a wax. So uh, this is my blank. I've left it quite thick for now and there are some carved lines on here. I'm going to leave those because cuttle bone has texture. And what I want to do is I want to create the look of cuddle bone texture, but do it in such a way that what I make could never be cast actually in cuddle bone. So, um, and you have to understand how cuddle bone works to, to know what can and can't be made in it. Um, so, sorry, I'm just looking for so I think I will remove some of this uh, I guess I won't need to so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to start off by drawing a texture line and so I'm going to make a bunch of non-concentric circles that kind of line up with each other. And I'm going to make it so that the whole thing can't, could never be cast in cuddle bone, but will look like perhaps it was. And that's going to be my goal here. So I'm just using my scriber and I'm going to start off by scribing some lines into it and they're kind of parallel but only kind of i am actually trying to get this to be irregular i don't want this leading edge to be exact uh, for those of you who have read my book there's a an image that really shows how the texture is layered so i'm gonna try to do the same thing here. And I'm starting with the larger ones so that I can have an idea of what this distance is. And hopefully I can get four on there. And again, I don't want these lines to be even. I don't want them to be perfectly parallel. If I was trying to do that, I would use dividers and so this last one is going to go from here like this and i want it to end over here so this one here has to be a little bit bigger and that's okay there we go And so I'm okay with that as my layout lines. So the way the cuddle bone texture works is it's, it's actually consist, um, overlapping layers. So I'm going to choose in this case to make this in between here the highest layer. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to curve the interior of this band but I want this, because it meets up with the edge, to stay basically the same. So I can carve this in a couple ways. I can leave that as the upper and I can cut this line on an angle. Again, I'm not following any particular design. I put those lines on there for layout only. 
The other thing I can do is my uh, rotary files have end cuts on them. I prefer these to other ones. I'm just going to switch to a, a smaller one here. So you can see the end of my rotary file actually has a cutting surface. And what I can do is, I'm not sure how I can let you see this very well, is I'm going to run this on a bit of an angle following along my lines and I'll show you in a second what this will look like. I do have to be aware that I keep my cut on an angle. It has to go from low to high and so on for each level. So this line here, I've just cut it and I'm just going to use my graver. I'm going to try to stay away from this outer edge so that it can stay. What I'm doing is I'm putting a, a grooved line that goes from being deeper here on the left to shallow at the right. And again, that's because that's how Cuddlebone looks. I may even add one more little uh, line in here, but we'll see. Now, so that's my step one. You can see there's a little step there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the next layer, having it deeper on the left, causing a little ridge to be formed as I go along. And again, this should not be even, should not be regular, should not be exactly the same depth. Otherwise, it will not look natural, which is what I want to, what I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to be carving this and it's going to be smooth. I will add the rest of the cuddle bone texture after I carve it. I mean, I cast it. So this is... Normally I wouldn't do this because um, I normally would just cuttlefish cast the texture. However, in this case, I actually want to demonstrate that it could be done if you really wanted to in wax. Get a similar texture, but most of the time you wouldn't bother because cuttlefish casting is actually faster than car wax carving, especially for this texture. So. There we go. So each one of these layers leads to the next layer. And maybe what I'll do for interest sake is maybe what I'll do is I'll high polish this area in between, which might actually look quite interesting. And I'm just kind of looking at it and seeing what needs to be deeper and stuff like that. So now I'm going to move into the next one. I'm going to do the same thing. I think it's actually more accurate to do it with my hands by hand than by flex shaft. Um, I can control my, my angle a little bit better because the tool naturally wants to angle my cut. And then all the way over here, and again, that whole piece has to facet and be basically one line leading to the leading edge. And where this line that I just cut comes to the original flat, I'm going to then carve my next pseudo cuttlebone line. So 
So this is basically the leading edge. And I do want to make sure that I remove my scribe line, my layout lines, because I don't want to clean those up afterwards. And then fade out to the edge on both of these, just like that. There we go. Now the angle is just a little off. So I'm just going to angle it just a bit more here. And there we go. Two more layers here. I keep telling everybody that uh, watching my YouTube and my, my Facebook videos is perfect for putting yourself to sleep. So if you can't sleep and you need to need a little help you can recommend my videos to other people they'll probably enjoy maybe learning a little bit before they fall asleep for those of you who don't fall asleep thank you very much so again i'm just going to fade that last little bit out on both sides so that the design isn't totally lost but it's actually a little deeper in the middle and shallower as it comes to the edge and the final one on this one. There we go. So now you can see I've got these two nice design patterns in here. And then we'll go to this one. You'll also notice that this ring right now is an eight and a half. By the time I take material off the inside, to make it a comfort fit. It'll be closer to a nine or a nine and a half. Um, I like my rings to start off large and then if I, that way people can actually put them on their fingers and see what they look like, as opposed to not having them fit. And I inevitably have to make new rings for customers anyways, so. Remember, if you do, if you're interested in this wax when I'm done, feel free to message, message me and I'll just go through the comments and see who wants it. I appreciate those people who purchased some of my previous waxes. And remember this can be cast in gold or silver or platinum. Um, totally up to you. So again, this first one is pretty deep. And then the next one comes in behind it. Make sure you get rid of your, your layout lines with each one. Try not to make your lines too even. It needs to be somewhat uneven in its overall texture because perfect cuttlefish doesn't happen. So again, as I come to this edge, fade out, but have it go all the way to the edge. Same thing on the other side, just so that there is a A little line there. There we go. Last one. Very small. And other side 
There we go. So now I've got one nice swoop here, one nice swoop here. So when this center is high polished and this here is textured, um, I'll probably oxidize this side and then high polish that middle. It should make this quite an interesting ring. And this one here is wider and it's irregular and I'm okay with that because uh, of the nature of the beast. Um, again, if I'm supposed to be emulating Cuddlebone, which is what I'm trying to do, I don't want that to be too regular. I want it to be actually irregular. And a little bit uneven. And that's what's going to give this ring its character, to be honest with you. You know, I think a lot of people are tired of seeing... 3D printed pieces that are all immaculate and not hand done, quite frankly. I find it interesting that um, a lot of people that do 3D printed stuff, because they designed it on the computer, they, they still call it handmade. And I, I don't know how I feel about that. Quite frankly, if I look at it, it's, um, yes, it's handmade, but if you're not physically making with your hands, how handmade really is it? And over time, will we lose this skill that I'm using right now? Um, what I'm doing now is this piece here is really quite high up on the shoulder. So I'm finding it difficult to get an angle without touching this shoulder. So I'm using the end, end of the graver to remove some of that material there. I still want it to be a somewhat flat plane as it comes up and over. There we go. And then the next one's gonna go just a little bit deeper on this side. And then it's gonna also fade and transition on an angle. So each one of these layers is angled slightly upwards from the back edge. So from the left to the right for you. That's my puppy dog barking, if you can hear him. There we go. Now again, I'm just going to sharpen that cut to the edge. And what that does is just gives us a better bit of crispness here. Couple more to go, and then I can start the inside of this one. If you have any uh, comments about my wax carvings, uh, feel free to mention it. Um, I do them to give people a sense of of what can be done and. and Basically, to demystify um, what we do as goldsmiths, you know, I remember when I was a kid, there was not a lot of information on how to become a goldsmith. And I have to say that is the one thing the internet does, is it really helps, hopefully, educate people on what it takes to do what we do. And... You know, just maybe it will be interesting enough to some young people that they will want to learn how to do it. So there we go. So again, this highest part, I will high polish that and then the rest, rest of it I will do um, a probably an oxidization. And then a 
uh, a uh, texture. So what I want to do on the side is I want to curve the inside and to curve that properly I want to decide how much I want to come up this edge. So I want to leave probably uh, maybe a bit, a bit more than that. So I'm just drawing a little line all the way around and that's going to be my finished height for my curve. Do the same height on the other side. Again, my blank I made on my lathe. Just like that. Now, I'm going to use a rotary file. Not this one, however. I want my larger one. And to do that, I'll have to get... So it's important to use the um, a rotary file that is the same width as, or as big of a, of a width. So if I use a small rotary file like this on a diameter of a ring this size, I'm more likely to have an uneven um, surface, which means a lot more work in the end. So by using a rotary file that is closer to this size. So I'm gonna put this in here, and I'm gonna carve this side first, and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. What I wanna watch out for is that I don't hit the underside of the ring with the back of the rotary file. So I'm just going to file to that line, just like that, all the way around. And I am being careful not to hit the back side of the wax. Now it doesn't matter much because I am actually removing that wax on the back side as well, but still. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And this time I'm going to do it from this side so I don't have to worry about the back side. Um, however, it is a little bit harder for you to see. Actually, it would be easier for me to do this. So this is going to be basically a full comfort, which means it's very curved on the inside. So now I'm just very carefully trimming up to my scriber line or my divider line that I use my dividers to get. And that's just so that that edge is nice and even. Same thing on this side, just gently, slowly go up to that edge. Now, so I've got a really long facet here and a long facet there, and I'm just going to take and round the interior just a bit. There we go. Now, I still have a little bit of a scriber line there. So I'm gonna take my very wide file before I cast it and just take a little tiny bit off to get rid of that line. Same thing on the other side.
the more cleanup I do in my wax, the better. Same thing in here. So this is fairly smooth from the rotary file. I'm just going to take my graver and smooth it out just a bit more. All the way around. And this is just to get some of those little grooves from the layout lines out of there. I'm kind of focusing in on this edge a little bit because that's where the divider line is. This whole thing is going to be sanded anyways once it's finished. There we go. And I want to make sure that this line is parallel. So it's a bit thinner there. So it means I haven't gone all the way around for uh, my removal. Same thing on this side. Just check it. There we go. So that's it in a nutshell. This should be super comfortable because it is so curved on the inside. It is fairly heavy um, with respects to its width this way, um, but I'm okay with that. And so we'll see how that looks after it's cast. And like I said, I will reapply the actual texture to these areas a bit more when it's done. Okay, I hope this was helpful. And thanks for watching my Wax Carving Wednesday. See you next week.